and being prepared with the greatest strength of all, the spiritual strength and self-confidence that enables us to reach out to our adversaries. To them and to all of you who have always been our dear and trusted friends, I tell you today from my heart, America is prepared for peace. What we are... What we're doing now in American foreign policy is bringing an enduring steadiness, particularly in the search for arms reduction. Too often in the past, we sought to achieve grandiose objectives and sweeping agreements overnight. At other times, we set our sights so low that the agreements, when they were made, permitted the numbers and categories of weapons to soar. For example, one nation, from the time of the signing of the SALT II agreement until the present, has added 3,950 warheads to its arsenal. That might be arms limitation. It certainly isn't arms reduction. The result was it wasn't even arms control. Through all of this, I'm afraid differing proposals and shifting policies have sometimes left both friends and adversaries confused or disconcerted. And that's why we've put forward methodically one of the most extensive arms control programs in history. We believe there can be only one policy for all nations if we are to preserve civilization in this modern age. A nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. Five areas we have proposed substantive initiatives. In Vienna less than two months ago, the Western side put forward new proposals on reducing the levels of conventional military forces in Europe. In the same week in Geneva, Vice President Bush put forward a draft agreement for a worldwide ban on chemical weapons, the gases that have been used in Afghanistan and in Kampuchea. In Stockholm, we're pursuing at the Conference on Disarmament in Europe a series of proposals that will help reduce the possibility of conflict. And in Geneva, as most of you are aware, we have been participating until recently in arms reduction talks on two fronts, the START talks on reducing intercontinental nuclear forces and the INF talks which deal with the issue of intermediate range missiles worldwide. In addition, we're working to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and to require comprehensive safeguards on all nuclear exports. During the months the START and INF talks were underway, the United States proposed seven different initiatives. None of these were offered on a take it or leave it basis. Indeed, we made a number of adjustments to respond to the stated concerns of the Soviet side. While Soviet flexibility did not match our own, the Soviets also made some steps of the kind required in any serious negotiations. But then, after the first deployment of intermediate range missiles here in Europe, the Soviets quit the bargaining table. Now, this deployment was not something we welcomed. It had been my hope and that of the European leaders that negotiations would make the deployments unnecessary. Unfortunately, the Soviet stance in those talks left us no alternative. Since 1977, while we were not deploying, but urging the Soviets to negotiate, they were deploying some 370 SS-20 missiles capable of reaching every city and every country in Europe. We and our allies could not ignore this threat forever, but I believe today it is still possible to reach an agreement. Let me assure you that in both the START and the INF talks, we want to hear Soviet proposals. We want them to hear our own and we're prepared to negotiate tomorrow if the Soviets so choose. I am prepared to halt and even reverse the deployment of our intermediate range missiles from Europe as the outcome of a verifiable and equitable agreement. But for such an outcome to be possible, we need to have the Soviets return to the bargaining table. And before this body and the people of Europe, I call on them to do so.
Indeed, I believe we must not be satisfied. We dare not rest until the day we've banished these terrible weapons of war from the face of the earth forever. My deepest hope and dream has been that if once we can together start down the road of reduction, we will inevitably see the common sense of going all the way so that our children and grandchildren will not have to live with that threat hanging over the world. Yeah.